Costa Rica is home to one of the world's richest amphibian diversities. And we figured this was the perfect opportunity to do a frog scavenger hunt. So what we're gonna do tonight is see how many species we can find in a single adventure. If you guys are ready, let the hunt begin. <coughs> holy cow, look at this. <laughs> holy mackerel. Check this out, we've got our first frog of the night, just a little one. I believe it is a stream frog. Let's see if I can catch it. You see it right there in the leaves. Look how well camouflaged that tiny hopper is. Got it. That is a stream frog, a female stream frog. And the females with this species get significantly bigger than the males. Typically it's the males that are found in the streams, but females are more commonly found in forested areas. And one of the coolest things about this frog is the coloration on the underside of its belly. Look at all of that yellow and orangish red speckling, and then those bright red legs. And if you look at the design of the frog's head, it's almost matte in coloration. Not so vibrant on top, but the underside is absolutely beautiful. All right, let's let her go and carry on. Here we go. So it's not technically a frog yet, but right there is a little egg cluster of frog eggs. And inside, every once in a while, you can see the teeny tiny tadpoles moving within that gelatinous structure. That is some variety of tree frogs, and they are beginning to take on life. Very cool. All right, guys, we got another little frog here. Got him. Okay. Wow. That is a very strong, thick fingered dirt frog. Now, the females do grow larger than the males, so I'm thinking this is definitely a female. And what's unique about these frogs is that they go through what's called direct development. So these frogs actually lay eggs that turn right into little froglets. There are no tadpoles in the life cycle of this frog. No, I got him again. Wow, it is unbelievably strong. It's like on par in strength with the smoky jungle frog. And they call them thick fingered dirt frogs because look how big and robust those front fingers are. Very cool. Well, that is another frog to check off on our list in tonight's frog scavenger hunt. Not the most brilliantly colored one, but the life cycle certainly is interesting. All right, let's keep searching. I'm looking for frogs. You're scanning down, you're scanning up, and then back up and then back down, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, got a frog right here. Look at this. Red-eyed, no! That is a splendid leaf frog right there. Holy cow, look at this. Yes! This is, without question, probably the most beautiful frog we could have come across tonight. Unbelievable. Okay, let's see. Don't want this guy to get away. If he's gonna go anywhere, he's gonna jump right out onto my hat. Got him. All right, let me see if we can get you to just, there we go, climb right up onto my hand. That is a frog that just jumped onto the light. Hold on a second. And I was just about to explain how like all frogs, they can hop if they need to, but they're much more prone to actually walking up and over the branches. You can see they have these really long spindly legs and each one of those toes is armed with a very sticky little suction cup pad. And in fact, their fingers can spread out so much that when they jump from leaf to leaf, they practically glide and can move themselves through the rainforest. When it comes to beauty, look at that orange coloration. And you can't miss that tiger striping that runs down the sides of the body. And look at those eyes. They have a vertical pupil, which gives them the ability to see incredibly well at night. And that pupil expands and contracts to allow light to come into the eyes. This frog is up in the treetops right now, hunting for primarily insects. 
This frog very rarely, if ever, comes down from the treetops. So for us to see one at this level, this height within the rainforest, was practically being in the right place at the right time. I'm just so blown away, so awestruck at the beauty of this frog. All right, well, we're gonna place this frog back up into its tree and see what other species we can find. I don't know that we're gonna find anything more beautiful than this, but we certainly could find something a little bit bigger. And there it goes, right back onto the light. <laughs> so, we've got another frog. I can't tell what species it is. Very difficult to see. I could just see its little butt hanging down on the underside of a leaf right there. And there's no telling whether or not this is solid ground or very sinky mud, but I'm gonna go out there and see if we can get that guy. What I'm gonna actually do is just pick the leaf and bring the leaf and the frog with me. <laughs> Gives you a really good look at just how camouflaged these frogs can be. Legs all completely tucked in, eyes closed, just looks like a bump on a leaf. That is the red-eyed leaf frog. Quintessential Costa Rica right there. This is the most famous frog that you can come across here in Costa Rica. And even despite the fact that I've got him perched on the edge of my thumb there, the frog is still half asleep. And look at that. There's a little nictitating membrane that comes over the eye that even has camouflage on it. Looks like the veins of a leaf. This frog is an absolute master when it comes to camouflage. And one of the coolest things about these frogs is they are insectivores, which means they primarily feast on insects. And they have teeny tiny little teeth in those jaws, but they actually use their eyeballs to help push their food down and into their throat. So if they catch a fly or a beetle or a moth and begin to chomp on it, those eyes will help force that insect down their throat and eventually into the digestive tract. I put in quite a bit of effort to go out there in the mud to get you, but you're a little camera shy. That's okay, you still count as another frog in our frog scavenger hunt. The most famous frog we could have come across tonight, the one and only red-eyed leaf frog. All right, I'm gonna go back out into the mud, find a new leaf for this frog, and we're gonna continue searching. All right, got some good water here. Let's check this out. Oh, careful, slippery. Oh, here we go. Look at this, a glass frog. Yes! Okay, move very, very slowly right on the edge of that leaf. That right there is a dwarf glass frog. And here in Costa Rica, there are 14 species of glass frog. All of them are very unique. Some of them actually have completely clear undersides. You can see the organs and the structure of their underbelly right through their skin. Now, I don't need to physically get hands on with this frog, but what I will do is bend the leaf just forward for you a little bit there. Oh, now it's on to us. And what's really unique about the glass frog is that this frog's head structure is what actually gave inspiration for the design of Kermit the Frog. How cool is that? Kermit is, in fact, a glass frog. Well, of all the frog species we were gonna come across tonight, I was actually really hoping that we would see a glass frog. This is cool. The dwarf glass frog, smallest of the glass frog group. Holy mackerel, look at the size of that smoky jungle frog. Those forearms are absolutely massive. Without question, a male. He is like Popeye. It's like this frog has been eating spinach. Look at those forearms. They are so muscular. is the quintessential call of the smoky jungle frog. Now they will make that noise if they feel as if they're in danger. Am I gonna be eaten right now if I make this screaming noise? Perhaps whoever it is that's holding on to me will let me go and I'll be able to escape. Now, if the sound doesn't drive you off, these frogs secrete a very potent toxin from their skin. 
It smells very pungent, and if you have any scrapes or cuts on your fingers and it gets in there, it is going to burn like crazy. And actually, if that mucus is on your skin for too long, it will just start to burn on its own. It smells absolutely terrible. Now, the way I can tell this is a male, is the males grow larger than the females, and they have these very distinct secondary thumbs which actually allows them to grip onto the females during breeding season. And the bigger and more dominant the forelimbs, the more powerful this frog is when it comes to battling for the rights to a breeding territory. I know, you've got so much to say. We heard you the first time. We really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Now, just so it's clear, me holding onto this frog right now is not causing it any pain. I'm holding onto the big, thick muscles in the hind legs. This distress call is essentially a way for this frog to escape any potential predator. You can imagine if you were an ocelot and you came into the environment and you bit onto this frog and it started screaming like that, it would startle you, giving this frog the chance to escape. But when it comes to frog scavenger hunts here in Costa Rica, I don't think we could have ended the night better than with the enormous smoky jungle frog. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get big boy back down into his burrow. Hey, Coyote Pack, if you enjoyed this frog scavenger hunt, write in the comments section below and tell us what your favorite species of the night was. Here's a quick recap. Streamside frog, thick fingered dirt frog, splendid leaf frog, red eyed leaf frog, dwarf glass frog, and last but not least, smoky jungle frog. <laughs>